Welcome back to my channel for another video and this video is all about revisiting the Nikon Noct which is a super special, very rare and absolutely unique lens. It's a 58mm lens, it's super fast with a widest open aperture of f0.95 and it has been made for the Nikon C camera series. In the past I posted three videos about the Nikon Noct on my channel and that's also the reason why I said revisiting the lens. This video is all about people photography. I will share sample images and footage from a shooting in Zurich with a German photo model and I will of course explain how the shooting experience was but most importantly we'll look into image quality. Shooting the Nikon Noct is one of the most unique experiences you can make in photography and clearly I will explain why and provide my reasons. And now let's kick off the video. Previously I actually shot the Nikon Noct on the Nikon C7 and the C7 is a fantastic camera but about 8 months ago I upgraded myself to the Nikon C7 Mark II and uh, despite the fact that the camera bodies of these two cameras look almost the same and are almost also the same from a dimension perspective the upgrade is really worth the price tag because the features you get in the new Mark II of the Nikon C7 camera are really terrific and I think if you're a Nikon shooter the Nikon C7 Mark II clearly is currently the best value proposition you can get in the Nikon universe. So let's put the predecessor the Nikon C7 aside. I should say I have not retired the C7 yet because when I go and shoot with Nikon gear I'd like to have a spare camera body and uh, this is because I had situations in the past where one camera body was breaking down and then it's good to have a spare body and if you go only with one body and this one breaks down you will be very happy to have a Nikon C7 so the predecessor of the Mark II in your camera bag. But Nikon discontinued the C7 and the only one you can purchase now is the C7 Mark II and as I said it's a fantastic camera. It's feature rich, it has fantastic autofocus which doesn't help you at all at the Nikon Noc because this is a fully manual lens here and the image quality coming from the Nikon C7 II is absolutely fantastic and the color rendering we get on Nikon sensors always reminds me a lot in Hasselblad or maybe vice versa what I get on the Hasselblad X1D Mark II reminds me in Nikon color rendering. In a previous video on my channel I already explained everything you need to know about the Nikon Noct. It's a fully manual lens, it has 58 millimeter, is a prime lens of course, it's fast f0.95 it has some features here on the OLED display which you can use, nice functionality I think, depth of field scale, all of that and I should not repeat what I already posted. What I want to do instead is showing a few sample images I've shot with the Nikon Noct on the Nikon C7 previously and then I want to go right into that photo shooting with that photo model from Germany, share my shooting experience and also show the footage coming from that shooting. Next let's go into the main topic of this video, namely the photo shooting with Sabrina Lawson. And she's a photo model from Germany and she fits in a perfect way into my workflow. So we actually had half a day over the weekend shooting in Zurich and we did shoot in different locations and we also did shoot with three different camera setups. The first camera lens combo I used was the Nikon C7 Mark II and the Nikon Noct 0.95 58mm which is what this video is all about. In the second setup I exchanged the Nikon Noct with the Nikon 50mm f1.2 which is still a pretty new lens and is in my opinion one of the best 50mm lenses you can purchase on planet earth and here clearly the autofocus of the Nikon C7 Mark II fully played out its strength. Last but not least I also wanted to shoot Sabrina with a medium format or large format sensor setup 
So I used the Fujifilm GFX 100S with the GF45 200mm from Fuji. Clearly also the images and footage coming out of the Nikon 50mm f1.2 shooting and the one from the Fujifilm here will be posted on my channel. So stay tuned and don't miss these videos. As I mentioned previously in the video, shooting the Nikon Noct is a very special experience. First of all, it's a fully manual lens. So you will rely on the focus peaking provided by the Nikon C7 Mark II. Second is a very heavy lens. So the weight of the lens is approximately two kilograms. And since the standalone weight of the Nikon C7 Mark II is 615 gram, we are talking here about give or take 2.6 kilogram in your hand, which is quite some weight if you go for handhold shooting. In order to provide some look and feel of the focusing process with the Nikon Noct, I actually mounted for part of the shooting my Atomos Ninja 5 on the Nikon C7 Mark II and recorded my focusing process. So let's have a look how this played out. I hope my recording with the Atomos Ninja 5 from focus peaking, zooming in, finding focus was helpful to see how the focusing process actually works on the Nikon Noct 58mm f0.95. Clearly I wanted to look now also into a few images in more detail and first of all finding focus is a challenge and uh, this applies in particular if you shoot at f0.95 which is the aperture applied for the first shots in the video recording you just saw. The challenge clearly comes from the model posing in the way you saw it in the video recording and every tiny little move of the head can move the eyes out of focus, which is not what you want. Here's another shot taken again at f0.95, so widest open. And if we zoom in here, we see the eyelashes are pinpoint sharp. That is one of the unique characteristics of the Nikon Noct that when the focus is sitting where you want it to sit, it's pinpoint sharp, even widest open. But clearly, if I would use here one of the very good autofocus lenses, let's say the 50 mm f1.2 from the Nikon series for the C cameras, then using eye autofocus would improve my chances to get a sharp image dramatically compared to manual focus in the way you saw it in my video recording. Here's another example of an image shot widest open at f0.95 and again if I zoom in here the eyes, the eyelashes, the eyebrows, they are pinpoint sharp and that's exactly what I wanted of course. What you also see here again is the nice background blurriness and there are two effects here which contribute to that. One is the widest open aperture f0.95 of course. The second is that my distance to the model means my subject was not too far for this shot compared to other shots when I have the whole body of the model in the scene and then of course the background blurriness is a little less elevated. I'll come back to this when we come to the right shot. So here I increased a little bit my distance to my model or subject and then you see here the background blurriness is less elevated than in the shot we saw before which was this one here. So here you have a much more smooth bokeh in the background and it's almost hard to recognize the structure of the buildings far in the background whereas here we clearly see that this is an industrial site in Zurich and we get the structure of the buildings nicely into our scene here. 
When I now stop down the aperture from widest open f0.95 to f4, which I also indicated in a yellow writing in the video recording before, then you get again much more background structure. It's still fuzzy in the background. If we look into that, it's a fuzzy background, so it still has some three-dimensional pop here in the image, but compared to what we had before, when we had the aperture widest open, of course, you get much more structure on the buildings in the background now. By the way, again, the image is super sharp. You get all the details, everything here. Clearly at an f4, it becomes significantly easier to find focus because you don't have that very shallow depth of field you have when you shoot the knocked at f0.95. This is an image I like in particular. You see again that the model's face is pinpoint sharp. The body of the model is nicely separated from the background. This is again an f0.95. And in general from the image composition, this is already cropped in you find some nice elements of symmetry in here. And as a rule of thumb, if you go for a model shooting, I've done a lot of shootings in fashion and beauty, probably not more than 20% of the images you take will find its way onto the final list for the selection process. And that's why it is good. And you saw this before in my recording that you go to high speed shooting and continuous shooting and make sure in particular with a manual lens like the Nikon Noct to take a lot of images because it will dramatically improve your chances that one of the images in a sequence of shots will be sharp and also match the taste of your photo model. Having said that, on one side of the coin, I think a model shooting is hard work. And in particular on that day, it was very hot in Zurich. So we were both sweating. We needed refreshments from time to time. But on the flip side of the coin, it should also be fun. And if the connection is right between the photographer and the model, it can actually be a lot of fun. And I should say that Sabrina perfectly fitted into my workflow. So on these three shootings with three different setups in terms of gear, we also had a lot of fun. Speaking about fun, we also used a mobile green screen installation at that outside location with the Nikon Noct. And then later in Photoshop, you can basically remove the green background and place your model in front of any other scene, whatever you want. Here, for instance, I used a high resolution shot I took some time ago in New York City and used it as a background for my model. Here another shot from downtown New York City and between the model and the background, I also copied in a window frame, all done in Photoshop. So at the very end, what counts is that you isolate your model from the background and that can of course be achieved by a green screen installation and then some post-processing, for instance, in Photoshop. If you liked that video, don't forget to drop me a thumbs up as an appreciation for my work. Stay tuned on my channel, there's always more to come. Thanks for watching, stay safe and healthy and of course, peace out.